Hi, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jack. Today we're going to talk about electronic monitoring of your heating system. You may ask, why am I doing this video? Well, it's been my experience that my heating system typically goes on the frets during the coldest parts of the year. And it goes usually on a weekend or holiday or just before a holiday. Last year, my uh, heating system went down the day before Thanksgiving and that was tough trying to find somebody to help me fix it. So I decided maybe a good idea would be to monitor the heating system and get some warning of when the system wasn't really working. Sometimes it takes a, a day or two or three before I realize something's going on and one of the zones may not be working. So today I'm going to go through some of the heating system components I have. I have a forced hot water system with zone valves and circulators and uh, some other equipment. I'm going to go over that and we're going to talk about how I monitor it. But before we get into that, I'm going to talk about the different components of the heating system, how they work, and we'll do a little field trip around my house to show you those components and then explain what's going on and then finally how to monitor them. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, let's talk about home heating system and how we can monitor it really easily. First thing we're going to talk about is the components of a uh, heating system. In this particular case, um, it's a forced hot water system. I'm going to talk a little bit about how you would adapt it to other systems, but the forced hot water is probably one of the more complex ones. It includes thermostats, like a lot of systems, both smart thermostats, digital thermostats, and mechanical, um, zone valves, circulators, circulator relays, water pipes, hot water tanks, and a power transformer. One of the critical pieces of this is the zone valve and how it works. So we're going to go through a little simulation of that later. I have an animation of how a zone valve works. It can sometimes be a little bit confusing. So let's take a field trip and I'll show you some of these components around my house. Okay, the first thermostats we're going to talk about are these two. One on the right is a programmable and also a learning thermostat, such as a Nest thermostat. It has a rechargeable battery, and in most cases, it can get its power from the boiler or furnace. The one on the left is a digital thermostat, and that is programmable also, but it requires batteries inside their typical uh, AA batteries. Okay, the next thermostat we're going to talk about is this mechanical one. This is an older style, but basically works the same as the other ones. This does not require any batteries or power uh, at all, and that's why it's called a mechanical one. Uh, but basically all of the thermostats work the same. When the temperature drops below a certain level that is set uh, by the thermostat, then a contact closes to do something which we'll see later with regard to the heating system. Okay, this is a typical zone valve I have in my system. And you can see here that if you look inside, it has a plunger and it also has some contacts in there. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, this is a, uh, <coughs> a, a picture of the uh, four zone valves I have on my system that control the heating to the various zones and uh, very similar, uh, although later models than the one I showed you on the bench. And down here is one of several circulator pumps which move the hot water um, through the baseboard heatings and also the radiant heat system. Over here is another component we're going to be talking about and that's the 24 volt AC power. I have two here because I have a large number of zone valves. Uh, and that uh, powers the zone valves and some other things. Um, this is, is the circulator relay and that's one of the components that we're going to talk about that controls the um, circulators. Okay, this is a, a diagram of a zone valve and how it operates. In this uh, diagram we have a thermostat right here that calls for heat we have the uh, Taco zone valve that I showed you earlier, which has a plunger 
and a coil. A coil heats up a, a mass of wax and grease that pushes the plunger when it gets hot. It has two contacts. This contact goes to the circulator relay. It's some kind, sometimes called an end switch. And then there's a coil contact which allows current to flow through the coil. And we'll see how this works in a minute. There's also a 24 volt AC transformer here which powers the zone valve. So the first thing that happens is when the thermostat calls for heat, it closes like that. That allows current to flow through the coil of the zone valve, heat up the wax and stop moving the plunger. That happens and at the same time the circulator relay contact closes and the valve starts opening. It starts to push on this uh, part of the valve which begins the circulator uh, uh, circulation of hot water. As it continues <clears throat> to heat up the zone valve pushes the valve fully open. At the same time this normally closed contact which has been powering the zone valve opens up and without that the zone valve would get very hot and would also um, keep pushing on the zone valve uh, and uh, keep it open. So that's the next thing that happens and that's a, the coil contact. When that uh, uh, cools off because there's no longer current flowing through the zone valve the plunger retracts slightly until this contact closes again. So the plunger is actually moving back and forth slightly, opening and closing the circuit for the zone valve. But the normally open uh, circulator relay contact is closed, so the circulator is still closed. Uh, the plunger would have to move back quite a bit for the circulator relay contact to open. So this is the circuit I came up with. It's uh, pretty simple and easy to implement. Over here we have the 24 volt AC from the thermostats or zone valves or circulators. We run that 24 volts AC through a bridge rectifier to convert it to DC and then we reduce the voltage with these two 1000 ohm resistors which cuts the voltage in half. So now the rectified DC is put through a filter capacitor 100 microfarads and then a 150 ohm resistor and an LED. Now the LED serves two purposes. Number one, it determines whether the power is on, so visually you can see it. And also it provides a clamp of a certain voltage depending on the type of LED it, that, that there's there uh, that you use, uh, which is an output of 1.8 to 3 volts. Uh, it could could even be higher. It depends on the LED. Red LEDs are typically 1.7 to 2.2 volts across them. Uh, white LEDs are more. So if you don't have a output going to a computer, uh, it really doesn't matter. You can use any kind of an LED. In my system, I use a home vision home automation controller. You could put this into an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi or whatever you want. But it's important to figure out or look up what the particular system you're using determines that, that, uh, how it determines what a 1 is. In my case, any voltage over 1.3 volts is considered to be a 1. Anything below 1.3 volts is considered to be a 0. So I could use anything. Um, red LED, as I said, is about a 1.7. I could go higher with a white LED and would clamp it there at maybe... Uh, two volts, two and a half volts. So uh, you can use any kind of an LED assuming that it will provide enough voltage across it to trip your home automation controller. Okay, so where are we going to connect these uh, sensors or these this converter we showed in the previous slide? Well, we want to first of all check that the thermostat's working. So we'll put the input on these two lines here between pin 1 and 2 of the zone valve. That way when the, when the thermostat is, is closed, uh, we'll get a voltage out of that, that circuit. Uh, secondly, we want to make sure that this normally open contact gets closed to turn on the circulator. 
So we'll monitor the, the circulator relay and when there's 24 volts across the circulator relay we will know that the circulator is being powered. Now how do we know that the um, the actual circulator is, is getting powered? Well we'll put another one of those circuits um, through another 24 volt AC transformer to monitor the circulator. Now in my case I have uh, I think I only have two circulators. Uh, one for, for this hot water loop that goes to the baseboard heating and I have another one uh, another circulator that powers the um, floor heating the uh, radiant heat system. Now these transformers, the other transformers as I mentioned are existing transformers in your system they're needed there so they're fine. Um, this one would have to be added and 24 volt AC transformers are pretty common they're anywhere from 10 to 15 dollars a piece so we'd hook, a, uh, hook one up across the uh, circulator so when the circulator is seeing 120 volts it would go through that circuit I showed you earlier and put out a voltage to show that the circulator is working. Now what about this contact here we're not checking? Well if that, if that uh, contact that's normally closed is open uh, then this zone valve will never get any current it will never turn on and it will never turn on the circulator so you'll know that. If this contact is shorted and always closed then this thing will overheat you'll probably start to smell it and the circulator really will uh, will stay on consistently or constantly. So that's kind of how we would monitor this this contact here. So we're monitoring the thermostat, the normally open contact, the normally closed contact, the circulator relay uh, and the circulator itself. So now let's go down and, and take a look at the circuit. I, I put together a mock-up on a plywood board and show you how it operates. Okay, here is a mock-up, a simplified mock-up of my heating system. Over here is the uh, mechanical thermostat we talked about uh, before. This is an old Tayco uh, zone valve. And right here you can see the monitoring circuit. It's kind of jury-rigged to provide an LED indication. This uh, Tayco zone valve, by the way, has uh, been replaced. It's, it's defective, so I'm going to have to manually uh, turn the contacts on because the plunger doesn't work anymore. Uh, this is the 24 volt AC transformer we saw on the circuit right here. Uh, over here is the circulator relay and another monitoring circuit right down here. And to simulate the circulator I have a fan motor here with a monitoring circuit uh, right here. So let's try it out. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to do is uh, turn on the thermostat and you see the light here which is what we said would happen so now if I manually close these contacts here, the circulator contacts in the zone valve you can see the light on the circulator re relay comes on down here and the light on the circulator or the fan comes on as well and when the contacts come off well, the circulator relay is not energized and therefore the circulator is not energized either. So, um, after jury rigging this up, I decided I would make something a little neater. And here I have a uh, perf board version of it with some uh, bridge rectifiers that are kind of large. Uh, I was making a six channel one here. And then I decided that I'm going to make a circuit board like I did for the, uh, my train dimmer circuit a nice circuit board. This, these people make very nice circuit boards. So I'm going to make one of those and I'm going to use these smaller bridge rectifiers which I bought on Amazon. And I'll be able to fit uh, three on a board or six on a board depending on what's needed. So uh, I put in an order for that and uh, they should be here in the next day or two and we'll see how that works and I'll show them to you. Okay we're in the lab and this is the circuit board I had made up. Uh, this is a three channel one and you can see here the uh, bridge rectifiers, the capacitors, um, the resistors in the circuit and I have three different types of LEDs here and I'll show you what the voltage across each one of them. This is a standard LED that's lit up now in the middle channel and 
the actual voltage across that that's that's clamped is 1.8 volts. Okay, and if I now hook it up to a high brightness LED, which is the third channel I happen to have in here, the voltage for that is 2 volts. And up here I have a high brightness white LED. And when that's on, the voltage there is 2.6 volts. So this is going to be the basis for the monitoring system. This is a three channel. I'm having a six channel board made up. Uh, I ordered some extras so if, if you want uh, to get a hold of some of these uh, send me an email and I'll see how many I have available. Okay the last piece of this is some temperature monitoring of the pipes. Here I have a couple of temperature sensors just above the zone valves which are wrapped in Teflon tape and we'll monitor the pipe, temp pipe temperature. So that's it for this video. The next video I'm going to produce is going to be the computer interface. I think you'll be impressed to see how easily it is to look at all of this information on a computer screen uh, with an automation system. So stay tuned for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and click the bell so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thanks again for watching.